to my troubles You're the only that in the finish of my faith Yeah, cut out my life I'm gonna trust you, my Redeemer My desire Praise the Jesus You're familiar with my weakness And I fix my hope upon you, Jesus you're the owner and finisher of my faith. I will trust in you all the days of my life, and I'm gonna reach to my home. I'm in the rain. Hello everybody, hello everybody, this is Success with Bob Mweti Live. I hope everybody can hear me. I hope everybody can hear me, this is Success with Bob Mweti Live. Hello everybody, this is Success with Bomwiti Live. Thank you so much for joining. I can see Faye, thank you. I can see Violet. Thank you, Kim. Thank you for joining. This is Success with Bomwiti Live. In today's uh, show, we're going to talk about the three mistakes, three costly mistakes that a lot of international students make okay those who want to come and study here in the u.s all right you're going to talk about that and i'm going to tell you what you need to do in order to avoid those mistakes all right Hello everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Success with Bob Mwiti Live. My name is Bob Mwiti. It's a beautiful Sunday here. For those who are following me for the first time, 
I live in Tampa, Florida, here in the US, okay? I came to the US about 10 years ago and I came here as a master's student, okay? Uh, before I got here, I had tried uh, for some years to, you know, to make it here, but uh, I had a lot of challenges. It took me about eight good years to finally make it here in the US, all right? Uh, for those who follow me, you know that I've shared my story before. I was denied visa many times, okay? And uh, I face these challenges uh, just like everybody else out there, okay? There's a lot of people out there who face similar challenges, okay? Uh, the thing is, I always say this, if you're, if you're faced with these kind of challenges, never really give up, okay? Never give up because at some point, things will work out, okay? Now, when I came here in the US as an international student, I faced also a lot of other challenges too, okay? And these are some of the challenges that a lot of people really don't know about until you get here, okay? And that's why I usually have this show, Success with Bomwiti Live, every weekend. I normally do it on a Saturday, but today I did it on a Sunday. I usually have this show to give you that information that you are probably looking for, okay? There's a lot of information out there on the internet, and most of the time, this, that information is not as a, at a one single place, okay? And that's why I like giving out this information because i've gone through this path okay if you're out there and you are trying to come to the us as an international student uh, my work is to actually give you the information that you are looking for because i've gone through the path that you are trying to follow okay now what are some of the three mistakes that a lot of students make and these are some of the things that i've seen okay because i you know i have an organization uh, that is a consulting company which helps international students and all immigrants here in the US, those who want to get into really good careers, okay? And I get a lot of calls, okay, almost pretty almost every single day, all right? Where people call me and ask me a lot of questions. They ask me for advice. What, what, how can you, how can I do this? What can I do this? How can I do that? Okay, so I'm sharing you information that I see most of the time, okay? Now, a lot of students, when they come here, okay, they choose the wrong program, okay? That's one of the things that I've seen a lot of times, okay? People reaching out to me, hey, Bob, now, oh, you know, I, I chose this program, I came to do this, and now I don't want to do it, I want to do something else. What do I need to do, okay? I've seen people actually come to do, they want to come and do master's program here in the US, okay? But they end up, choosing to do, uh, when they get the, the visa to come here and study here in the U.S. as an international student, they choose to do, to come and study in a, in a, in a community college for an associate degree. And this is someone who has already a degree, okay? And this person, they want to come and actually do a, a master's program, but they go ahead and apply to a community college to do an associate degree. Okay, most of the students, they do this, they say, oh, you know what, because, you know, uh, community college, they are a bit cheaper, okay, uh, you know, that's why I could, uh, you know, that's the only college that I could, I could afford the school fees, okay, but then if it's cheaper, why do you come here, then again now start looking for, you know, for, to study a master's program. Okay, there's no point because if you come here, you come to a community college, right? You come to a community college, maybe you spend a semester or two semesters, that's a lot of money. I mean, as much as community colleges are cheaper, this is US, still education is very, very expensive, okay? You don't want to come here, spend one, two semesters in a, semesters in a community college, and then after that, now try to change and do a master's program if you, are, if you really wanted to do a master's program, okay? I don't understand this. So if you really, if you're really interested in coming to the US and doing a certain program or a certain degree, if you have a degree already, come for a master's program. There's no point of going, trying to get into um, an associate program and then you come here and now that's when you want to, after two semesters, you want to start doing your master's program. It doesn't make sense, okay? First of all, you are trying to, you know, cut the cost 
and then you come here you spend money in, a, in an associate uh, program okay one semester two years semester then i mean a two one semester two two semesters in a, in a two year uh, college and then after that you decide to to do um to do a master's program right it doesn't make sense okay make those decisions way before you come here in the us okay take your time to look for the best programs out there Okay, there's a lot of programs out there that you can do. If you really want to come and do an associate degree, know the, you know, the cons, okay? The pros and cons of doing an associate degree, okay? Don't just focus on, a, on an associate degree just because it's cheaper, okay? You need to think past your graduation. When you graduate, now you have an associate degree. Do you, can you be able to get a good job with that kind of a degree, okay? And... If you get a job, can you get a job that can give you the right immigration papers? Okay, I've talked to you guys. I've told you that when you come here and when you graduate from college, you have to think about how to get the right immigration documents. Okay, how to work here. All right, how to work here. Okay, and for you to be able to, for you to get uh, visas like, for example, H-1B visa, which is a work visa, you have to have a four-year degree. Okay, not an associate. You have to have a four-year degree or you have to, have, you have, to have, have accumulated a lot of experience, okay, for you to get that kind of a visa. So, you have to think about these things before you choose to study, okay? Think about it, okay? What's going to happen when you graduate, okay? Is this really the, the right thing that you want to do, okay? So, if that's not the case, then take your time. Try to look for the best program out there, okay? That's one of the mistakes that I always see students making. They come here and then now they start wondering, oh, I want to change this. You start doing that, it's going to be too late, okay? And you're going to be wasting a lot of time and money as well, okay? You can imagine you pay for one, two semesters in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an associate college, in, I mean in a community college for an associate degree, and then after that, you, you leave it and then start looking for another school. It's going to cost you a lot of money. And here you are saying you, want, you wanted to cut on the cost. Okay? Now, another thing that I see a lot of mistakes, okay, from prospective international students and those who come here already. Okay? They choose the wrong school. Okay? They choose the wrong school. You come here... I don't know, maybe that's now when you start realizing, oh, you know what, this school is a little bit expensive. Oh, you know, I could have, you know, I could have found maybe another school. Oh, I don't like where this school is located. These are some of the things that you should be aware of way before you set foot in America. Okay, when you start that process, this usually takes about one year, at least one year, okay, for you to come to the U.S. as a student. It should take you at least a year to prepare. Okay, you look for schools. You have to do a lot of research, guys. Okay, you can't just look for one school and think that's the best school out there. No. Okay, there's a lot of schools out there. No, a lot of people, they can't be able to figure out, but you need to take your time. Okay, take your time, all right? Take your time, research for the best schools out there. The location of the school matters a lot as well. Okay, you don't want to go to a school that is in the middle of nowhere. Okay, also, if you don't like some of the, you know, the weather here, because, you know, here the climate is different. If you move up north, it's very, very cold. Okay, if you move close to Canada, it's very, very cold. If you move further south, like where I live in Florida, it's one of the, you know, sunniest states out there. Okay, there is no winter here. Okay, so it depends with where you want to live. If you are someone who can't really cope up with the brutal cold up north, then don't look for a school up north. Look for a school that is in the south, okay? If you are someone who likes staying maybe like in a big metropolitan cities, like for example, New York, Los Angeles, okay, Dallas, okay, these big cities, then look for schools close to those, uh, those areas. But remember, these schools might be very, very expensive, okay? If you are someone who likes living in maybe, you know, farther away from the cities like uh like in the rural areas there's some places within the u.s where the, where there is really you know where it's not close to big cities where you can go to school okay for example the school that i went to it's not even close to a city the closest city to the school that i went to was like an hour and a half okay so it was in a school in the middle of actually in the middle of nowhere in a very small town okay so if you want that kind of an environment then you should look for those kind of schools okay but don't don't just pick a school 
Okay, maybe because you have someone that you know there, because a lot of people make this mistake. You know, they say, oh, you know what? I want to stay in New York. I want to come to New York because I have a friend of mine living in New York. Remember, this is America. Not many people can keep you. you know, not, many, not many people can accommodate you. Okay, not many people can take their time to help you out. Okay, you're going to be on your own. Okay, don't depend on people. That's what people, a lot of people, they don't realize. Okay, when you come to the U.S., be prepared. The more you look and prepare, no one wants to deal with you. People have so many problems here. I'm telling you guys, okay? You know when you're out there, you think like, you know, in America, you know, life is, you know, easy. You know, there is money and all that. It's not like that. People here have a lot of responsibilities. We have people that we have to support back home, okay? We have bills here that we have to pay, okay? I've told you guys it's very expensive to live in the U.S., okay? So, if you are thinking, oh, you know what, I'm gonna, I want to stay in, I want to come to school in New York, just because you have a friend living in New York, you don't even know whether they can accommodate you, you don't, you, you have to understand these things, okay? Don't just go to a school just because you've heard about it, or you know a friend there, okay? All right, make sure that you look into other things, okay? Other factors, why you are choosing that school, because I see this a lot of times. Students, they come here and they, they just want, and then they want to leave. They want to change the school. Oh, I want to go to another, I don't like this school, I want to go to this school, that school. The moment you start changing, you're going to be, it's going to cost you a lot of money. You go to a school, then you spend a semester, maybe you can't even transfer the, the credits that you studied there, and then now you want to go to another school, you know? Take your time, okay? Like I said, it, it takes at least, it should take you at least one year, about one year for you to come here in the U.S., okay? Because it takes a lot of time to prepare, to research, find the schools, okay? You know, do the exams that are needed, okay? Entrance level, entrance exams. You know, I, I've, told, I've told you guys about this, right? We talked about if you want to come for master's, there's GMAT, GRE exams that you have to do. If you're coming for undergraduate, there is SAT, SAT exams that you have to do. If you are coming from a non-English speaking country, you have to do TOEFL. Because also, I see a lot of people, like, for example, I was saying earlier that a lot of Students, they choose a program they don't even want. They choose these programs because also they don't ask for this kind of entrance exams. Now, for example, you are choosing a community college to do an associate degree, and yet you are someone who qualifies for a master's degree, but you don't want to do that because a master's program will ask you for GMAT, GRE exams. Okay. And because an associate degree won't ask you that. And then you come to the U.S., you don't want to do that. Then you want to do a master's program. Even when you are here, you will still be required. If you are going to a really good school, you will still be required to do those entrance exams. If you are coming for a master, you're going to be needed to do GMA, GRE. If you, are really if you are going to a really good school, those schools, they require you to do that. Unless you have a lot of experience, sometimes they can waver. Okay, but most good state universities, they're going to ask you, they're going to ask for those scores. Okay, they're going to ask you to do those exams. Okay, so be prepared. Do these exams. Take your time. Okay, there's no rush. Okay, if you're coming to the U.S., you want to come here and then finish school here and then get a good job and then stay here permanently. I told you guys I came as an international student, okay, all right, and then I graduated and then I looked for a job here and then I've, I've been here for 10 good years, okay, right now I'm a permanent resident, okay, so you can do that, you just need to take your time, okay, don't rush things because the more you rush things, okay, the more you don't prepare, the, the more you're going to come here and face a lot of challenges, this country it's not easy. Okay, you have to understand that. I know a lot of people when they are back there, they don't, you know, they don't think about these things. Oh, I just want to come to the U.S. I just want to come to the U.S. I want to leave this place. I want to get there. Okay, but then what happens once you get here? You're going to be faced with a lot of challenges. You can't even finish school. There's so many challenges here. Challenges to do with immigration documents. Okay, you have to maintain your status as an international student. So if you are not prepared, you're going to be in trouble once you're here. And you can't be able even to get good jobs. Remember, at the end of the day, if you are spending so much money in school here, okay, you want to work here after you graduate. If that's your plan, okay? And work good jobs, not just any... Of course, there's so many jobs here in the U.S., okay? But you don't, just, you don't want to work just any job, okay? Especially if you have the right education. If you're, if you're educated, you don't want to just do any job out there, okay? You need to do a good job, a job that will pay you bills, a job that you don't have to worry about 
paycheck to paycheck okay you, you don't have to worry about oh what am i what am i gonna use to pay my bills this month okay you need a nice paying job okay and you can only do that if you're well prepared from the beginning okay before you set foot in america as an international student okay now What's the last thing? What's the other thing that a lot of people make mistake, mistakes? A lot of interna prospective international students make mistakes. Okay. That is usually like the first, the, the top most mistakes that a lot of students make. Okay. Most of them, they come here and they don't have enough finances to finance their education here in the US. Okay. Now, I know a lot of us, you know, we have, you, you, you want to come here and, you know, you're looking for all kinds of uh, alternatives to study here, okay? Sometimes you want to come here and then what some, most, of, most, of, most of the prospective international students do, they look for, you know, someone to, you know, provide them with the, you know, with the bank statements and all that to present at the, at the U.S. Embassy. And then they get this bank statement, okay? And then... The same bank said the same person who presented those uh, documents they are not the person who are, who are going to sponsor them when they're here now if if you really want to come to the us just like that that's fine but if you really want to come here and actually go to school and finish your school you need to know where you're gonna get your finances okay guys it's not magic it's not like you're gonna get out of your country and then come here you have no idea who's gonna pay for your education no idea nothing and then you think you can actually finish your education here it won't happen okay and that's why we have a lot of people a lot of international students okay facing so many problems here in the u.s okay they come to the u.s they don't look for alternative sources of uh, funding okay okay and then if they come here and then they are not able, they, maybe they go to school for one semester, two semesters, and then that, after that, they are not able to pay for, uh, for their school fees, and then they drop off. Now, if you drop off, then you are immediately out of status. And the moment you are out of status, it's very, very hard to get really good jobs. I keep on talking about good jobs, guys, not just any job out there, okay? Good, good jobs, guys, okay? The moment you're out of status, it becomes very, very hard for you to get a really well-paying job, okay? So if you really want to come here and finish your education, you have to figure out how to get the funding, okay? How to fund your education, Okay, you can't just get the documents just to present at the embassy and then you don't know how to finance your education when you're here. You have to figure out, okay, you can get international student loans, okay, you can get scholarship, but you need to know whether you'll be able to get these things before you land here. Not when you are here, that's when you are trying to look for, for loans, not when you are trying to figure out, oh, how do, I, how do I pay for school? You had all the time. Okay, that's a mistake that I see people making. You had all the time. Okay, I've told you guys, spend at least a year researching, trying to figure out how to pay for your school fees. Okay, because school is very, very expensive here. Let's say, for example, even if you come here and get a job working in college, I told you guys, like, you can work in college for 20 hours, maximum 20 hours. You know, college jobs, they pay minimum wage. Let's say, for example, you get paid like um, $10 an hour and you're supposed to work 200 uh, I mean uh, 20 hours a week okay so 20 hours a week you are being paid ten dollars an hour that's two hundred dollars a week in a month that's about eight hundred dollars okay if you are thinking that you're gonna get a job and pay for your education it's gonna be very very hard it's 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 not possible because if you are getting paid let's say for example eight hundred dollars remove the taxes that you're gonna have to pay what is left very little and then here here it's very expensive. I've told you guys, like the cost of accommodation is like five hundred dollars on average for a shared accommodation for students. Okay, that's just accommodation without any, without the bills. Okay, you know electricity, water. Okay, and there'll be there'll be other expenses that you're gonna be incurring as an international student when you're here transport and all those things. Okay, so it's very very expensive. You can't just rely on your a college job to pay for your school fees okay i've told you guys about this you know I've, I've, I've i had a session here on this show where i talked about the cost of studying here in the u.s it's gonna cost you about 20 something thousand dollars over twenty thousand dollars yearly to study here in the u.s so you have to find a way of getting that money it doesn't it's not magic 
you have to figure out if you just want if you want to actually come and study here unless you really don't want to do that unless you are all you want is just to get out of your country and then you don't care what happens later on okay which i see a lot of people doing okay and they come here they struggle so much they can't get the right immigration document they can't get good jobs they start struggling this country you can struggle a lot you have to be well prepared you you have to be prepared guys you can't just come just like that blindly okay you have to know where you're gonna be able to find the money to pay for your education okay i've said before you can get unsecured or secured international student loans okay you can get scholarships you can get grants okay all right so there's opportunities there's alternatives out there but you need to figure out before you get here don't just come here and then when you're here that's when you're trying to figure out how to find these things you had all the time okay take your time research Okay, what is needed to come here and study here so that you don't come here and start struggling like a lot of people, okay? I've told you guys there's thousands and thousands of struggling international students out there in this country who don't have the right immigration documents and they don't have good jobs, okay? Okay, you know you guys, when you're still back there, you don't know these things, okay? Until you learn here, that's when the reality hits you, okay? So... If you're out there and you need some guidance, I have my International Scholars Program. For those who are interested in joining that program, you can follow the link on this uh, post, in this um, show, in whatever I posted on this. And if you want, you can join that program and I'll be able to guide you through my proven path of success. I will see you next time. Goodbye.